This is a video for how to test your blood in Genetics Lab. I have everything set out here right in front of me for the video, but some of these things will be in different places in the lab when you do this. You will need two slides. You'll need a Band-Aid, a Lancet, an alcohol swab, you will need some toothpicks, and you'll need access to the antibodies A, B, and D. A has some uh, blue coloring added to it so you can tell uh, which one's which. B has some yellow. D, which is anti-RH, uh, is clear. I mm, hope I have enough there. M and N, which <laughs> cost us a lot more and so they come in fancier bottles um, are both clear and so we have some uh, fancy kind of uh, weld trays and they already are labeled A, B and RH so that's D but there aren't any that exist that uh, are already labeled M and N and so what you're going to want to do is a little bit of prep work before you uh, stab yourself with the lancet. Since everyone in the lab is going to be doing this at the same time, you want to label things. So first, make sure your name is on the tray because some of these reactions take a little bit of time and you may have to wait before you're able to see whether you're A, B, uh, M, N, M, or N, or M, N. Um, so put your name on there and then you got your A, B, and R, A. On the other one, again, your name, and then change one of them from A to M, and from B to N. Okay, so this is now MN. All right, so we got our trays ready. You want to get everything ready because you don't want to be running around with a finger that's bleeding a little bit trying to find the things that you forgot. Okay, the antibodies are going to be up in ice buckets. They're not going to be at your table, and you should leave them there because everyone's sharing the same antibodies. The rest of it you can get and bring to your desk. Okay, so before you get started, what you're going to want to do is get your trays ready, bring them up to the antibodies, and get them ready first. Okay, and so what you do is put a drop or two of antibodies into each well the correct well. And so these are antibodies that were produced by a company, a biotech company, and so anti-A is making antibodies, the ones that are labeled anti-A. They are antibodies that stick to the A antigen, and so if you're blood type A, it'll clump there. Let me make sure. Yep, yep. Um, and so if you see agglutination, you know you're A. Same with M, same with N. So if you clump in both A and B, you know you're AB. If you clump in RH, you know you're RH positive. If you don't clump in A or B, you know you're O. Put the same amount in each one so that you know how much blood to add to each. And the, the rule of thumb here is add the same amount of blood as antibody roughly. You can definitely overdo this. Too little blood and you won't be able to see anything. Too much blood and uh, you can definitely overdo the reaction. Um, okay. So next. Get a band-aid ready. And an alcohol swab. Now you can an alcohol swab. You can choose where you want to, which finger you want to stick. It's entirely up to you, but I would recommend against the fingertips, um, even though that's what they do in, on TV, because one, that's where all your calluses are, and so what you're going to find is for a lot of you, it's actually hard to get blood. It's not that you're going to be bleeding all over the place. It's actually really tough to get blood for a lot of people, because this is a very, very small needle. 
And so you don't want to have to do this over and over again. And you got many of you big calluses right here. Not to mention this is where all your nerves are. And so you don't want to feel this, right? And so what I do is I use the side of my pinky right here. Not very many nerves here. And uh, it's thinner skin, so easier to get a little bit of blood. So wipe it down with the alcohol. Kill whatever you can with alcohol. There you go, and then let it dry off. The lancet, what you do is this green thing here is a protective cap. You just twist it off, comes out, it's trash. The lancet is buried in here, it's a single use thing. When you press this green button, it snaps out. Okay? So what you do is place it where you wish to draw blood. Now, if you are someone with cold hands, it's going to be tough to get blood. And a, a good idea is to warm your hands up maybe even squeeze the area, maybe even kind of milk a little bit of blood down there, get some blood flow going, okay? So press it to wherever you want to draw blood, start screaming ahead of time. No, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Press the button, right. that's it. Not a big deal, right? Okay, it, it isn't gonna start gushing blood. <laughs> it's a very, very, very tiny little needle. And so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to kind of squeeze squeeze to get some blood okay this is very small you won't even feel it it's that small and so once you get the blood like I said the trouble you're gonna have is getting blood not bleeding take a toothpick you want to use a new one every time and you're going to scoop some of it up and swirl it around in the antibodies. You need enough that you can see it, but not too much. And then a new one. If all you can see is a tiny, tiny little amount, you won't be able to see a reaction. Now, as it happens, I'm O positive, so you're not gonna see anything in A or B. We have a very nice chart in the lab where you can see examples of each kind of reaction up close and I recommend when you do your own that you take the slide and put it under one of our dissecting scopes whether you have a positive or negative reaction whether you can tell uh, that it's a reaction or you're not sure because it looks cool being able to see the agglutination reaction up close under a microscope the M and N antibodies are um, high-quality antibodies and so they are going to work very very well and so this is what you want to see right about like that anything that touches human blood no matter what you know about how safe you are is considered biohazard so make sure it goes in the biohazard uh, waste in the lab that's it I'm fine and then these reactions can take anywhere from a couple minutes to 10 minutes. And so go on about the experiments while these reactions are happening. You can give them a kind of gentle rock. And then sometimes it's hard to see what the reaction is unless you kind of come up to it and give it a little shake. And then suddenly you can see, oh, look at that. I got specks or I don't. And so I don't know what you'll be able to see on here. But, uh, in fact, the RH is already starting to react um, with some tiny little speckles. And so that's how you do it.